So I'll start my five minutes now, and, and I guess the question will go to Mr. Stalkup to kind of get an overview of, of the process or mechanism that we have at the federal level to assure that whether it's legislation or through regulation or through executive order, that a real effort is being made by the agencies and departments of the federal government uh, to have a, a diverse um, and very qualified workforce. But who's truly responsible? Uh, one, for identifying best practices, r making recommendations to all of the governmental agencies, departments, and entities as to what they should be doing. And of course, I think as Mr. Osegueda may have already alluded to, and monitoring, um, because we've had this discussion before, and I think I know the answer, but you're the GAO. And, and basically, you identify the different entities that have different responsibilities. So, so what would be your answer? Well, to a large extent, those responsibilities are shared between the EEOC and OPM. Um, both organizations require agencies to analyze their workforces. And, that, and, and in the end, under any scenario, that's step one. They need to understand their workforces. Uh, not only just in terms of numbers, but how they align with agency mission and what the needs are. Um, both, both EEOC and OPM require agencies to handle a report on what they're doing uh, in terms of identifying any barriers that are there and what they're doing to address those barriers. Um, Government-wide, in the study that we did with you, Mr. Chairman, uh, we looked at how OPM and EEOC were carrying out this function on a government-wide basis. And they do collect this information, they do summarize, and they do annually report to Congress uh, on those numbers. Um, what we've not looked at, um, and it's a fair question, is what uh, those organizations are doing directly with the agencies based on what's reported to them. And, and I know that when GAO assumes one of uh, a responsibility that, that Congress re, uh, will make a request that you will assume, you're very, very careful to always stay within the guidelines or boundaries of what's being asked and not to expand or go beyond. And I know when we are talking about diversity in numbers, you usually will identify how an agency or department uh, may be uh, meeting those particular numbers, what policies and so on. Then you look at OPM, EOC, and, and what they're doing. But do you identify, or has that ever been part of your charge, to identify what would be the best practices or any shortcomings in identifying best practices? Um, it, it's been my experience that basically you can give us a bird's eye view of where we are and where the numbers, but not necessarily, uh, again, policy-wise. Are the policies good policies? Are the policies effective? Should they be doing something else? Should there be some sort of accountability mechanism? Have you ever looked at that, and if you have, uh, if you could tell me what you think you have found. We have looked at that, Mr. Chairman. We uh, did a fairly robust study going back several years. The report came out in 19, or excuse me, in 2005. But what we did was we surveyed experts throughout uh, the country in all levels and disciplines uh, to get ideas about what they thought were the keys to good diversity management. We then took, we built a, a, a list of best practices based on what we learned from those folks. Uh, there's eight or ten uh, practices on there. It starts with top leadership commitment. It involves recruitment. It, regard, it involves succession planning. It involves <coughs> integrating your human capital into the strategic plan. And we went out to select agencies, I believe it was five agencies, and looked at how those kinds of things and uh, what they were doing in those areas and in their own areas in terms of techniques to go out and what worked well. And that report is available at, uh, on GAO's website. It's a very good report. It has a lot of good information in it. Thank you very much. And then this question is, is to uh, Ms. Kishuk. And that is, I think we understand the role that you play and that you outlined uh, in your uh, testimony. And I have less than a minute, but, but quickly, what about it? I know that you make suggestions, you identify best practices, and you, you kind of monitor and, and, again, evaluate. Is there any accountability if, in fact, you identify an agency or department that is not following those suggestions or recommendations that you promulgate. Okay. The method of accountability for us is through the Federal Human Capital Scorecard and reporting on their act, on agencies' activities to, div, to build a diverse workforce. And that is the, um, the scorecard that's the red, yellow, green uh, rating for agencies. And that shows, that shows how they're pro progressing. That's that's our accountability. Other than the report that we published, the Hispanic report is very 
extensive as far as the data it reports and it, it shows the data per agency. So there's also the publication of how agencies are doing, the, right. the shining the light on their data. Well, thank you very much. And my, my time is up, but we'll come back and follow up with the other witnesses. I, uh, my pleasure to recognize the ranking member, Mr. Westmoreland, for any questions he may have.